14th chapter of John. I say unto you, you know, when, when Jesus or God speaks, amen, through the word, we need to pay close attention. Hallelujah. Now, this is Jesus talking to you and I. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. How many believes on Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. Well, he's talking to you. Hallelujah. Jesus is telling you something here tonight. Glory, he that believeth on me. Amen. Every believer he's talking to tonight. It didn't say just for the 12 disciples. He said, he that believeth on me. That's us. We believe on him. We believe in him. We believe all in him. Amen. The works that I do shall he do also. Who? Is he still talking to? Those that believe on him. The works that Jesus did. He said, He said, you, you shall do them too. Hallelujah. Works that I do shall he do also. Who the believer? Thank God we're believers tonight. And greater works than these shall he do. Who's he talking to? The believer. Hallelujah. Because I go unto my Father. Now listen to verse 13. I don't know. I read this last night. I read it this morning. I read it throughout the day. I read it again this afternoon. Amen. Somebody, amen, needs to hear what God is saying here tonight. Verse 13. And whatsoever. What's that mean? Anything. Everything. And whatsoever ye, ye means you, shall ask in my name, that will I do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ain't that wonderful? Ain't that good news? You know, some people don't get excited unless they win something. I get excited at the words of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's telling me, he's telling you, the believer, those that believe on him, he's still talking to you. Hallelujah and me. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. It don't make no difference what that is, what your request is, what your need is, whatsoever. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. If it's a healing, financial, amen, a, a rise, whatever it is. Hallelujah. That's what he means. Amen. Amen. Let me read it again. I think I'll read it again. The word of God. And let it bless my soul. If it don't bless you, you are not saved. And I'm, I'm hard on that. The word of God blesses people of God. The word of God is for you. And you and you and you. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified or honored. Hallelujah. In the Son. Verse 14. Remember. Amen. This verse. John 14, 14. Go through today, tomorrow. John 14, 14. That ought not be hard to remember. If you can remember uh, uh, your favorite ball team numbers. You know, it's a shame people can know all about uh, names of their favorite uh, singers, country, or rock, or whatever, or ball players. They can remember their names and numbers, but can't remember the Word of God. There's something wrong. Amen? 1414, <laughs> 14, if ye, you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Who, who will do it? Jesus. For who? For those that believe on him. Hallelujah. I wish everybody we know was here tonight. Glory to God. Just because of the word of God. Hallelujah. You know people live a defeated life. Amen. Because of lack of knowledge. You know why they don't even have the knowledge of God? It's because they don't read. This is all knowledge right here. The Word of God. If you shall ask anything whatsoever, that's everything. Anything. Anything. He said, I will do it. Well, Brother Master, I pray. Pray again. 
I pray. Pray again. Jesus taught us, uh, taught us to knock. He didn't say how long to knock. Just keep praying until he opens that door. Hallelujah. Do you love him tonight? Verse 15. I said last night, I said if I get to preach, hey amen, I'm going to take my time. Hallelujah. I want people to get the word of God. Hallelujah. Every believer, hallelujah, needs to get the word of God. It's important. Amen. I'm going to show you after why. Because some people pray they don't get nowhere. They don't get no answers. There's a reason why you don't get no answers. Maybe it's too because you're too lazy to read God's Word. Too lazy to pray. Amen. People say, hey, I don't have time to pray. Turn the television off. Quit enjoying the things of the world. Pick up a book that was alive when it's written and it's still alive today. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you love Him tonight? All right. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, keep His commandments. If you pray and you're not getting anywhere, maybe then you're not keeping His commandments. And God said several places, not only His commandments, but His statutes. That's His sayings. Everything God said for us to do, we're supposed to do it. Hey, and don't complain about it. Hallelujah. I said to somebody the other day, God loves a cheerful giver. If you pay your tithes and you give offering, amen, because you feel like it's your duty. Amen. Or so, you know, that's just one of the rules of the church. No, it's not the rule of the church. The Bible says he loves a cheerful giver. And God wants more than your money. He wants you. Hallelujah. Now listen to verse 16. And I will pray the Father that he may give you another comforter. Glory to God. He said, I will pray to the Father. Hallelujah. He will give you another comforter. Who is another comforter? The Holy Ghost. Glory to God. You know, the Holy Ghost. I like to call it Holy Ghost. Amen. I've had people call, oh, I'm spirit filled. I'm spirit filled. What kind of spirit? All kinds of spirits. There's a lot of evil spirits, but there's not but one Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And John the Baptist called it the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray. Jesus is saying it. I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comfort. Who? Those that believe on him. When I started this a while ago, those that believe on him. Those that accepted him. Those that are born again. Hallelujah. He will give you another comforter. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the power of God. That he may abide. Stay. That word abide here, hallelujah, means stay with you forever. People will walk away from you. People will divorce you. But there's no divorce in Jesus. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I go with you all the way. Hallelujah. All the way to the end. He'll be with us forever. Look at verse 17. Hallelujah. Even the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. You know, we're living... Amen. When the President of the United States calls the news me the fake news. But there ain't no fake about this. This is real. This is genuine. This is the truth. Jesus said you shall know the truth. 
and the truth shall make you free. No matter what you bound with, how in your mind, soul, or body, hallelujah, you can know him and he will make you free. Glory again. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Now, hallelujah, I'm reading this and I couldn't get away with. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth. Only ones that can receive the, the spirit of truth is those that believe on him. Those that accepted him. Those that are born again. Those that are Christians. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth. Oh, I could preach on that for an hour. Hallelujah. <laughs> because, listen, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. <laughs> oh, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. Hallelujah. How <laughs> can Jesus be in us through the Holy Ghost? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus said in the word of God, God and himself will abide in you. The only way is to receive that uh, another comfort is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Do you love him tonight? Yes. Glory to God. Oh, I know I've said this before, but the sheriff of Polk County, Florida, I used to be his past, his grandmother's pastor. Hallelujah. And outside church one day, hey man, she looked at me, Sister Judd, and she said this. She said, just think about it, Brother Massey. The third one in the Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The third one in the Godhead dwells in you and me. <laughs> Glory to God that ought to make a Baptist to shout. Glory to God. Just think about it. Amen. The one that spoke the world in existence lives in us. We might not be rich. We might never be rich. Our names might not be in life. We might not ever be anything. Amen. To the world. But thanks be to God. The Spirit of God dwells in you and I. Can you lift your hands and praise the Lord? Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! The world don't know him. So the spirit of truth cannot dwell in them. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you know him. How do you know him? By getting born again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! For he dwelleth with you. Just for him to be with us is good news. But he also will be in you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, I want to preach so bad I can't hardly stand it. Well, <laughs> amen. Chapter 15, verse 17. Look at it. Hallelujah. If ye, you, ye means you, if you abide in me, Jesus said, and my words abide in you. Ye, you shall ask what you will, and it, I got it highlighted and underlined, it shall be done unto you. Hallelujah. Every man's a liar, the Bible said, but God don't lie. Hallelujah. Let me read it again. Hallelujah. If ye, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will. And it. What's that mean, Brother Massey? Whatever it is. Whatever the need is. It. Shall, I love that word shall, not maybe, it shall be done unto you. Hallelujah. Now going back to verse 12 of 14th chapter. You know, sometimes I'm so hard-headed. Hallelujah. And the devil tries to make my mind wonder when I read. 
Hallelujah. I have to read it again. Has that ever happened to anybody here tonight? Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. So let's read it again. Let me preach it one more time. <laughs> oh, the singing was good tonight. Oh, I've been blessed. But they, the angel said this morning that church about 200 people where we were at ministered. Hallelujah. This morning. They ain't nothing like the word of God. The word of God is going to stand with all the singing is sung. But the word of God, the Bible says, is going to stand. When you in trouble, go to the word. When the devil is tempting you, even Jesus himself, the Bible said he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And the devil come against him. Oh, but he said it is written <laughs> that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. All 66 books that makes up the Bible. We live by every word. Yes. Hallelujah of God. Hallelujah. But thanks be unto God, Jesus went to John's baptism, John the Baptist. And we know that John never baptized anybody that have not repented. People came to his water baptism service, and he told them to go back, bring forth meat worthy of repentance. You know, you can go to some churches, you can be baptized in the water, join the church, and be one of the biggest hypocrites in town. But I'm here to tell you to join the real church. Amen. Jesus don't take in hypocrites. He don't, amen, he don't take people that are false. Glory to God. He takes people that was, but they get saved. They get born again. They get changed. Glory to God. And if there's no change, there's no salvation. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You cannot claim to be a Christian and say four letter words. Chop it down. You cannot be a Christian. And get mad and go to throwing things. Why ain't this side shouting me down? Why ain't this in the middle shouting? Preach it, brother Bassey, preach it. I'm telling you what, I'm preaching the word of God. No way you can live and go to heaven using four letter words. The Bible said, don't let no evil communication proceed out of your mouth. Amen. God's people don't tell nasty jokes. God's people don't listen. God's people don't go into the places of the world. Say is this. Hallelujah. This word. It don't lie. What Jesus tells us. Hallelujah. You can bank on it. Amen. You might have to keep praying. Glory to God, his hands are down there this morning. You might even have to get in the floor and beat the floor and call their name. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, if you pray long enough, amen, God's going to come on the scene. Yes. Yeah. He always hears the cry of his people. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus is talking. Not the Apostle Paul. Not John. Hallelujah. But Jesus went to John's baptism. Hallelujah. And Jesus, I can see him now getting out there in that old muddy Jordan about waist high. And old John was there. Now John didn't look like the modern preacher. He didn't have a, a three-piece suit on and a, a tie. I always call it a choke rag. That's a good one. He didn't have spit shine shoes. The Bible said when he came out of the wilderness preaching the word of God, he had camel's hair. 
He had a poor man suit. He didn't have a hairstylist to do his hair. He didn't have right guard, Michelin, or any kind of deodorant or perfume or cologne to make him smell good. But he had the Word of God. And I'm telling you, that's more important to have the Word of God. Hallelujah. Than to own a brand new car, live in a brand new house. Amen. Because I'm telling you, that don't make a home. Glory to God. You can have salvation and be the poorest and live in the poorest side of town. Glory to God. I know what I'm talking about. I was born on the wrong side of the track. But the Lord saved me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus is saying, he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Woo! That's powerful. Hallelujah. I've seen the blinded eyes open. Jesus said, we pray for people that were blind. Yeah. And their eyes came open. Jesus did that. He prayed for the blind. Yes, he did. He said, these things I do, you shall do. Now, he ain't talking to just anybody. He's talking to those that believe on him. That's what he said. Hallelujah. I, I, I prayed for, well, I, we have prayed. Deaf ear unstopped. I'll never forget it. We was in the Church of God in North Florida. I decided to have a victory march around that church. Three times around, a man that was dead opened that back four corner. He said, I can hear, I can hear, I can hear. Jesus unstopped the deaf ears. Now let me read it again. Y'all ain't getting it. You talk, you say, well, this is somebody that's born over there. That's somebody else. But listen. Very, very, I say unto you. Who's he talking to? He that believeth on me. Everybody that believeth on him. Everybody that believes and, and is saved. Listen to what he says. The works that I do shall he do also. Who? He that believeth on me. Hallelujah. Oh my. And greater works. What can we do greater than Jesus ever did? But it's, I believe the word. And greater works than these shall he do. Who's he talking to? Those that believe on him. Every believer uh, is here tonight. And everybody that's under the sound of my voice. That's who he's talking to. If you're willing to live right. You rid of the you rid of the live a holy life. I thought Jesus was a holy person. Amen. Woo, it gets quiet. <laughs> Let me read it again. Verily, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. He didn't put no names here. He that believed. Those that believed then, those that believed on him ever since, amen, he spoke these words up to now. Matter of fact, God said he's going to pour out his spirit in the last days. We're living in the last days. On men and women, boys and girls. Old men will see visions, young men are dream dreams, and then young men see visions. Are you receiving that? If you're not, you're living below your privilege. You need to put some plates back. Amen. And turn the television off. Get on your knees. Get in the Word of God. Amen. And believe. Yes. All things are possible to him that believes. How many believers do we hear tonight? Okay. I'm preaching to you. Out of the works that I do shall he do also the believers and greater works 
than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Why? Because he's going to send the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I know Jesus made it back to heaven because I received that comforter, that uh, another comforter, the power of God. He told his followers to go, amen, to Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place in one accord, and suddenly they heard a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were set in. Not bowed in the altar, right where they were sitting, clothed in tongues as fire, as fire, set upon each of them. And they all, 120 of you, find in chapter 1 of Acts. All 120 of them went to speaking in another tongue as the Spirit gave them to the others. But Brother Massey, that was for that day. No, keep reading chapter 2. It's for you, the disciples. It's for you, the 120 men and women was in the upper room. And to the many that is afar off, and many as the Lord thy God shall call. If God called you to salvation, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for you. Yes. I can preach this several ways. I can come back and preach it again. Hallelujah. God has got so much for us, church. And I believe we're living up below our privilege. Because we rather even have the spirit of lust than the spirit of God. But the Bible said if you'll walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So when the lust of flesh is coming to you, you're not walking in the spirit. Shout me down. I'm just telling you what the word of God. And if you'll get sanctified, that lust to leave. And you'll never receive the Holy Ghost until you're sanctified. Woo. Verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that what I do. Is, am I reading fake news? I believe this is good news. The gospel. Of Jesus Christ is good news. And whatsoever, that means anything. Whatsoever, God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. I'm here to tell you I've been serving God for 45 years. I have asked and asked, and God has gave me everything I had need of. Never, never. You listen to this, doubters and devils. Never has God let me down one time. Everything I've ever needed and all that I didn't need, he gave me desires of my heart. And whatsoever, that means whatever you have in, whatever it is, ye means you shall ask in my name that will I do. Jesus said he'll do it. You need to be sanctified. That's what you need to pray for. If you're not saved, you need to ask God to save you, sanctify you, and baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Before you ask God for a, a ride, before you ask God for a house, before you ask God for anything, you need to get saved. Believe on him. That's who he's talking to. And you'll prosper as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified, honored in the Son. Verse 14. Remember this. 14, 14 of John. If you shall ask anything, that's everything, right? Anything. Anything. In my name, I will do it. He'll do it. I will pray the Father, verse 16, and he shall give you another comforter that he, the comforter, may abide with you forever. Verse 17. 
even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That makes me want to shout yes. to know that the world don't love me, but God loves me. Hallelujah. And he goes with me and he dwells in me. Somebody poor. Jesus saved. And he goes with me. He walks with me. He talks to me. When you have nobody to talk to, you talk to him. How do he talk to you? You want to talk? Talk to him. God, I'm sorry for every lie. I'm sorry for every sin. Forgive me as a sinner. Wash me. Quiet as snow. Cleanse me. Save me. Sanctify me. Fill me with the, the Holy Ghost. Seek ye first of these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things. House, car, food, money to pay the bills, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, long suffering, hallelujah, the fruits of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, Faith, miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, sermon of the Spirit, prophecy, whatever you need. You know, we so spoiled that we we want, we want, we want, but it's the wrong wants. Psalms 23. There is no want. 34. No want to them that fear the Lord. No want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If you want, I don't know if I can do this or not. A question mark, sir. If you're in want, read the word of God. Psalms 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Make Jesus your shepherd. Make him Lord of your life. Guarantee. Money back. Lifetime warranty. Amen. You will never be in want. I said it. And then Psalms 34. There is no want to them that fear him. You don't fear God. That's why you watch what you watch on the idiot. I meant the television. Sorry. The, you, you, you're, not, you're in need because you'd rather watch something filthy or listen to something filthy. Amen. Because you're not sanctified. And then you go around blaming God in the church. Amen. Because you are in need all the time. Preach it, Brother Massey. It's getting fewer and fewer. But it's the truth. It's the truth. You shall know the truth. Hallelujah. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Why can't the world receive the spirit of truth? Because they don't ask God to forgive them of the sin. They're not born again. Because it seeth him not the world, neither knoweth him, but you know him. <laughs> For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. 15 verse 17. All right. Amen. 15 chapter. And I'm closing. Verse 17. If ye do abide in me, and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will. 
Hallelujah. And it shall be done unto you. All the high school plumber and the college people that's listening, I'm going to have to get down to the first grade. If you abide in me, Jesus talking, for all you graduates and know-it-alls, uh, and my words, Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, abide in you, in your mind, get them in your heart, then you shall ask what ye, you, will. And it, that word it means everything you'll ever need. It means food. It means money. It means the fruit of the Spirit. It means the gift of the Spirit. It means a happy marriage. It, 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 everything it is it, it, it. Whatever it is, yes. that's how you read the Word of God. He don't have to lay it out. He don't have to say, this is God. Shake you out of your recliner. This is God in earthquake. He's already spoken it, and he don't have to speak it again. Amen. You want to hear from God? Read the Word of God, and the, I feel the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. and the Spirit of God will do His work. I don't know who this was for tonight. Hallelujah! But I know, I know the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I know that God told me to speak these words to you tonight. Hallelujah. You need to get up in the morning with the word. Hallelujah. You need to go through the day. Might have found it be a good idea to go to memorizing the word of God. Just, just go like this. God, what you want? To, how do you want to talk to me today? Oh, there it is. Oh, everyone that thirsts. Come ye to the waters. He that without money, you don't have to be rich. Come and buy. Hallelujah. Wine and milk. Talking about the spiritual things. I just flipped it right there. Isaiah 55. That's a big good one. Verse 1 for y'all to read. And just quote it all day long. You have to write it down. Just quote as much as you can. And then if you get stuck, you know what? <laughs> I don't know who I'm preaching to. Let's stand. God bless you.